I would yeah. like to introduce you to anybody who doesn't know who Paul is. Paul Card is with Helena. He has worked with the Vineyard team for a long time. You're our board treasurer for the second go around, I think, right? <laughs> I think, yeah. Well, for second, yeah, exactly. And yeah. Uh, and just a huge support really just has a huge amount of experience and knowledge in um, calculating nutrient and nitrogen for, I think, all kinds of crops, more than just vineyards, but you've also worked a lot with vineyards directly too. And it's a great wealth of knowledge to help our members complete chapter 14, which is due on December 5th. Some information that maybe not everybody knows is that we have been working with Regional Water Quality Control Board 3. So that's you know primarily the Central Coast, anyone who's in, in Region 3 who needs to comply with Ag Order 4.0. We've been working with them to get some regulatory relief for you. So because we're already collecting all of your nitrogen and water use through Chapter 14, we're eliminating duplicative work by taking that information and being able to send it to Preservation Inc. We're kind of like a subset third party approved through them who then sends it directly to the water board. So you've probably been seeing lots of emails from Whitney lately asking for you to update your AGLs, your APNs, and your AWs. And if all of those acronyms feel kind of confusing, please just reach out to us and we'll help you figure out where to get the numbers. Yeah, and with that, Paul, I will turn it over to you. And if anyone Perfect. has questions, you can always, you know, raise a hand or throw it in the Q&A or the chat. And really our goal today is to help you, you know, accurately answer chapter 14. Yeah, that's that's the key. So uh, I assume you can, uh, Beth, you can see my presentation on the screen. Beautiful. <laughs> All right. Well, there's uh, obviously a lot to cover um at, in this in this section there's a there's a ton of calculations and if you have never um filled out sections uh 14.2 and 14.3 which is the water and nitrogen use um all those calculations can certainly be uh rather rather daunting um if you've never done it before but fortunately we have some some great tools uh to help you do those calculations um and so we're gonna review those calculations and then we're also going to um share uh the calculator that we've that we've built um that actually will get you those numbers but um it's important with you know with when using a, a calculator to understand the kind of the underlying math uh, and and kind of what where those numbers are actually coming from to help with um, some of the uh, common challenges uh, when it comes to um, nitrogen and water use because uh, I've seen over the years um, that we've been either you know some of the some of the math challenges as far as you know, moving the right decimal point or, or, you know, converting from a percentage to a decimal point creates um, some of the, some of the errors uh, that we see in, uh, in submitting the report um, that kind of requires you to have to go back and, and re-enter that information because, um, yeah, we usually don't enter, you know, say do, um, you know, 200 pounds of nitrogen per acre. We do, you know, 20 pounds of nitrogen, but, and that's where a decimal point can can do so uh, as we go through uh, this this presentation. Um, if again, if there are any questions, uh, please pop it in the uh, in the chat. Hopefully, I will see it, um, and if not, I will uh, rely on Beth to uh, keep an eye on uh, the chat as well to to interject if we have any questions. So, uh, anyways, let's get started. So, as Beth mentioned, um, Paul Kraut with the. Uh, um, Formerly an agronomist with with Helen Agro Enterprises, now I I, uh, I run agronomy and organics for the Western U.S. for Helena. So um, I, I, I'm not directly in the field as much anymore, but um, been a vineyard manager. I managed uh, a number of SIP certified vineyards, so I have I've gone through this process many many times um, and have been involved uh, as a board member with the vineyard team for. Oh shoot! Since uh, 2009, um, so it's been yeah, it's been a long time. All right, well, let's get started. So, uh, let's see if I can make this work. Okay, so 
we are going to primarily focus on sections 14.2 and 14.3 uh, in your, your SIP documents. And so 14.2 is our water use report. And within that report, we're going to be calculating our applied irrigation water, our applied frost water, as well as rainfall. And those all combine together to um, give us, you know, basically the total amount of water that that uh, has has gone on that uh, on that vineyard block. Um, and then in section 14.3, that's the nitrogen use report. And typically that's going to be all of your fertilizer inputs. Your nitrogen from compost, if you applied compost, there is a nitrogen component in that, and we have to calculate that and count that. Uh, and then nitrogen from uh, from the water. And and if we're on, you know, groundwater and, and certain wells have a certain percentage of nitrate nitrogen in there, we have to count we have to count that in there. So here's what your uh, your um, page on on the uh, the SIP renewal web form looks like. Um, that's a app.sipcertified.org um, where you will select your uh, ranch group uh, and uh, we'll select that and that pops up section 14.2. So you've you've probably within 14.1 uh, entered your your general parameters, which is your your acres and 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 the like. And um, this is where we're going to be, doing all of our calculations and entering this data. Now, um, here, let me bring up, um, let's see if I can bring up a pointer. All right. Well, I guess I can't be that fancy with bringing up a pointer. I'm used to, uh, I'm used to, Teams, maybe. Does teams, teams, where I have a pointer. <laughs> I can annotate, but I don't want to annotate that. Um, all right. Well, um, can can you see my mouse? You can see the mouse oh, very clearly. Okay, yeah. perfect. So okay. The spin, it definitely okay, good, good, good. So, okay. So, if you can see my mouse. So, we have, um, this is obviously, this is where we're going to, we're, we're going to log in. And, and on, under requirement number one of 14.2, this is where we, um, where we enter all of our calculations. Now, the key thing to remember uh, that oftentimes people forget is, is that the, the units um, and, and to match your units with what you're reporting. So this is acre feet per acre. Um, not acre feet total for the vineyard. And that's often, that's a that's a common misconception. Some people will say, oh, well, my water meter said I, I, I put 20 acre feet um, for, you know, for this year. That's that's what I'm entering. Nope, that uh, we have to divide that by the number of acres that you actually have. So that's a that's a very important piece to, um, to calculate. So my question is, do you keep irrigation records? Um, there's oftentimes, uh, probably the most important thing. And one of the most common things that, um, that I, I certainly hear from people is, oh, shoot, I don't really calculate or have calculated my, my, uh, my, my irrigation on a, and documented it. And that's very, very important. So, um, this is obviously a, this is a spreadsheet, um, and it, it basically is broken down by block, by week during the year, the total number of irrigation hours that you have that you have applied, um, and then there's some calculators um, that give us you know gallons per vine and then acre feet per acre. So if we're looking at say block two here, um, if we follow this column down, um, we can see that we um, irrigated for uh, you know 133 total hours over the course of the season. That's 72 hours, 70 hours per vine, and that's 0.383 um, acre feet per acre. Now I'm going to talk about how all these calculations work in a second, but this is just an example of a of an irrigation record. So, what kind of information do we need when we are um, calculating uh, applied irrigation? So, question number one: Do you have a flow meter? Um, oftentimes, uh, vineyards do or you know may or may not and if you do have a flow meter then the the calculation and and we're going to go to the the calculator here in, in a little bit but but the calculation is your flow in gallons divided by the number of acres that you have divided by 
326,000 gets you your acre feet per acre. So there's this many gallons in an acre foot. And so that's the calculation. That's where we, where we go. So in our example is if your flow meter said you had 500,000 gallons um, and you have a three acre block, you divide that by 326,000, that gets you a half an acre foot per acre. Hopefully that makes sense. However, if you do not have a flow meter, we can certainly calculate and we can certainly help you. Um, so what do we need? You need to understand, you need to know your vine and row spacing. We need to know the number of emitters that you have per vine. We need to know your emitter flow. And uh, if, you, if you look at these types of emitters, these are uh, probably the most common emitters on the market. These are the Netafim woodpeckers. Um, they are stamped on the, uh, on the emitter, their flow rate. And unfortunately, they're made in Israel, so they're in liters per hour. So you have to uh, do a little uh, conversion there, but they'll either be stamped in gallons per hour or liters per hour. So for example, um, on these Netafims, the most common ones that we use in the industry are half gallon per hour Netafims. The, and those will be stamped with a two liter per hour um, on, on the dripper. But that's something uh, important to, to know. However, if you also have, there are inline emitters. So there are emitters that are, that are um, basically installed in, on the interior of the tubing. You have to um, get that information uh, from your uh, from your supplier or whoever whoever used it because unfortunately the stamps usually uh, rub off after about a year. So very important to understand your emitter flow. And then you need to know your total irrigation hours. So that can be calculated either by um, you know you can if you don't have a flow meter you can you there's there's certainly a, a number of ways you can calculate your irrigation hours if you have um, say uh, a pressure transducer on your system so uh, it's a switch that that turns on when your system um, when your system pressurizes or even just looking at your pg e bill um, for that uh, you know that uh, those those days you can you can calculate the number of hours that you've applied. So here's what the calculator looks like. This is the calculator. This is a screenshot from the spreadsheet, um, the uh, the Excel spreadsheet calculator that was uh, that is included in um, the. It is linked to the uh, on the on the site. Um, I will uh, I'll show you here in a, in a second. Here, actually, here I'll go forward here. If you look right here where it says Water and Nitrogen Use Report Workbook. This is where I am screenshotting everything, um, and that is an Excel workbook. So here is um, the and the you know basically a screenshot of that irrigation calculator, um, and within that workbook, uh, you enter in you know all the yellow highlights uh, are the uh, are the areas where you enter data, and then the pink is what gets you uh, your your basically your totals. So. Um, this runtime calculator has a number of different ways to go, but we are looking at the, as I mentioned earlier, the total hours, the emitter flow rate per vine, the row spacing, and the vine spacing. So in this case, in this example, um, we had 400 total hours of, uh, of runtime. There were two half gallon emitters per vine, so that gives us one gallon per hour. Um, that's probably the most common configuration in most vineyards. Is one is 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 two emitters uh, per vine, one on either side of the uh, of the trunk. Um, so our total um, is one gallon per vine. Our row spacing is ten foot, and our vine spacing is six. So the calculator does all the math that I had showed you earlier. Um, and it's calculated out 0.89 acre feet per acre. And that is telling you, okay, this is where I enter in 14.2.1. So in our water use report, uh, 0.89 uh, acre feet per acre. Now, um, if you look here in this section and here's the math, um, we uh, applied 10.7 inches per acre um, divided by 12 inches. Uh, that is 0.89 acre feet per acre. So that is where our calculator gets us. Um, now, if you uh, you see this add file section, 
this is where we document either via a um, a spreadsheet uh, like the irrigation schedule that that I had shown earlier, uh, or um, the a you know the calculator. I always like to to add that here to drag that um, into here to upload that um, that calculator uh, into the uh, SIP. Uh, database there that way you can document it um for uh you know for reference later all right now just as we've done irrigation water we're going to look at um what frost water use now uh this is again this section 14.2.2 uh and this is where we enter that acre feet per acre of frost water so question number one do you have frost protection sprinklers? And uh, if no, then you just enter zero in that section because we did not apply any frost. However, um, if you do have frost protection sprinklers, we do need the same information as the irrigation. So we need to know how many total hours of frost control you've run, the flow rate of that frost control system. Remember, frost controls are typically, they're not drip emitters, they are sprinklers. Um, either impacts, as you can see in the um, in the uh, in the picture there, or uh, micro sprinklers. They all have uh, rated, you know, different flow rates. So you need to understand what the uh, what the flow rate on that frost control system is in gallons per hour or gallons per minute. Um, usually for sprinklers, they will give you the data in gallons per minute. So um, Again, it's very important to, to understand the and, and know the difference between gallons per hour and gallons per minute. Um, we run the same calculations as the irrigation system. Um, in our example, uh, we did not have any, we do not have any frost control. Um, and so we entered a zero. Um, and uh, however, if you did have frost control, there is the uh, a section for frost control uh, water use in the in the calculator, which we're going to review here uh, as soon as I am done with the PowerPoint here. All right. So rainfall. Here's the other uh, calculation, um, and I and I did this similar calculation for. Uh, for the, the irrigation just to, to keep the, the, the numbers different. But typically rainfall we get in inches, in inches per acre. Um, and so, you know, just like, oh, what was it three days ago? Paso got 1.7 inches of rain. Well, that's 1.7 inches per acre. Um, and so remember, we need to get acre feet per acre, not inches. So we have to divide by 12. So where do you get your rainfall information? Well, it can be a number of different sources. It can be an on-site rain gauge or weather station. Um, I'm a big fan of on-site weather stations because they can document the total amount um, of rain that you get over a period of, of time um, with those uh, onboard rain, um, uh, rain sensors and, and onboard rain gauges. Um, so looking at, at this one, it gives you a nice graph over, over, over time. Um, as to how much uh, how much rainfall you've had in your rain year, and so in this case it was seventeen point, basically seventeen and a half inches of rain. Uh, you can certainly use a, a weather service uh, with nearby stations, you know, close to close to where uh, where you are. Um, an example would be uh, West, Western Weather's uh, Paso Robles Wine Country Alliance database. Um, so if you're a PRWCA member or, or other you know, other Western weather subscriptions, um, you can go on online and download a basically a spreadsheet of uh, weather information uh, for a given time. And so, for example, this is, I'm dating myself here, this is from January 1st of 2017 through January 25th of, of 17. So this is over, oh, I'm sorry, this is, um, this is actually the whole year. Um, so we look here and we look under total precipitation for the season um, and you can, within that date range. Um, and you can see the total is 21.6 inches um, in that case. Um, you can certainly use other online sources or if your neighbor has a weather, uh, a weather station, um, 
you know, go for go ahead and uh, ask them what what they got. Obviously, the 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 more local and the more um, you know, the closer to to your site, the better. That just gets you more accurate um, more accurate information. Um, so in this case, we're going to use the the example from here, which is twenty one point six inches, um, and uh, or. Actually not. We're going to use 21.17 inches uh, as an example. Um, so that's how much rain we got. That's inches per acre. We're going to divide that by 12. That gets us 1.76 acre feet of uh, of water that has been uh, applied to that uh, to that block. All right. Now we're going to go into the nitrogen use report. And I'm gonna walk through, as soon as I'm done with, as I mentioned earlier, as soon as I'm, I'm done with the presentation, I'm gonna walk us through some examples uh, within, the, um, within the spreadsheet so we can, uh, we can take a look at that. Uh, all right, so nitrogen use. This is where um, things can get certainly a little, a little confusing for, um, for some people because again, we're calculate, doing calculations on a per acre basis. And we're we need actual pounds of nitrogen, and that's where some of the challenges that happen. But again, if you have this nitrogen use workbook, you can do the calculations very, very, uh, very readily. So, um, what do we need for uh, for this section? Well, we need to understand the total. We need the total pounds of nitrogen per acre from a number of sources: from your fertilizer. So uh, NPK fertilizer, that stands for nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. We're interested in this number here. So you have dry sources of fertilizer. You have liquids for sources of fertilizer. Different calculations for each one of those. And we'll, we'll discuss those. We have compost. We need to calculate the amount of nitrogen from compost. If you applied compost, um, that is a nitrogen source. And then again, irrigation water. We know how much irrigation water we applied because we did those calculations in the in the prior um, prior presentation uh, in the prior calculation. Now we need to calculate how much nitrogen is in there. So first off, on nitrogen containing fertilizer, um, dry calculations are are relatively easy. So for example. You applied 20 pounds of ammonium sulfate, which is a has an analysis of 2100. So what does that mean? That means in 2100, that first number is the percent of nitrogen per pound of fertilizer. So it's percent by weight. That's very, very important to remember. So dry calculations are really easy. So if you applied 20 pounds of nitrogen, um, or sorry, 20 pounds of ammonium sulfate that is 21% nitrogen, you are applying 4.2 pounds of nitrogen per acre within that 20 pounds of fertilizer. So that's where that calculation fits out. So within the calculator, the dry piece is easy. You just apply the total pounds that you've applied per acre, the percent of nitrogen that was in that fertilizer, and then it gives you your your calculation. Now, oftentimes growers apply a combination of dry and liquid fertilizer, or they just do straight liquid. So we need to add up every single application, individual application that you've made during the season. So you might have made um, two, three, four different fertilizer applications over the course of the season. We need to run our calculations for each application and then add those together. So when we get into liquids, this is where things get a little bit more complicated because liquids have an analysis. So you can see here, CAN 17 is a 1700, but that's again, percent by weight, not by gallon. So each liquid fertilizer has a different, what we call bulk density. So it's important we do our calculations uh, we have to do a little conversion there to convert gallons to pounds. Um, and so have this handy dandy little calculator that I built. So I know that for every gallon of fertilizer in can 17 that I've applied, there's 2.15 pounds of nitrogen. Uh, but again, we just need to do the math. So a couple key concepts with liquids is understanding bulk density. Um, bulk density, again, as you can see, you have a number of different 
nitrogen fertilizers, you have UAN32, very common nitrogen fertilizer, and you have CAN17, another common nitrogen fertilizer. However, they weigh vastly different um, amounts and they have different quantities of nitrogen in them. We, gotta, we need to convert those gallons to pounds of nitrogen. Um, so here's an example. We applied 10 gallons per acre of CAN17. CAN17 has that bulk density of 12.64 pounds per gallon. So if we multiply 12.64 times 10 gallons, that gets us 126.4 pounds of fertilizer that we have applied per acre. We take that total pound, that dry weight, multiply that by 0.17 because it's 17%. That gets us 21.5 pounds of N per acre. So if I do the liquid portion of the calculator, you can see I entered this calculator here. So 10 gallons, 17% nitrogen in that fertilizer, the weight per gallon of that fertilizer, and then there is our um, calculation. So that is in the calculator. So you don't have to do all this, this math here, the calculator do that for you. You just need to understand um, and know what, you know, what the, those, key, those key details are. All right, so here's a summary of our dry and liquid um, application. So we had our 20 pounds of ammonium sulfate that we applied that got us 4.2 pounds per acre plus our liquid application. So our total application for the course of the season is 25.7 pounds of nitrogen per acre. So if you combine all these, and this is the calculator, so you can see we have our dry solid fertilizer calculator, our liquid fertilizer calculator, and then at the bottom, that solid plus liquid in this little pink box, that's what you're gonna enter into um, this section right here, which is 14.3.1, which gives you all of your now, again, an example of the, the calculations, and we enter that piece here. And again, you want to uh, add, um, click in there and, and, and add either your, your fertilizer uh, fertility program, um, fertilizer uh, invoices, or whatnot to, um, to document the, uh, the total pounds of nitrogen that you've applied. All right, that was the easy part. Now we got to go to compost. <laughs> uh, compost can be a little bit more um, challenging. And so there are a number of different calculators out there. And fortunately, we have a very good one that you can use. Um, you just need to get a guaranteed analysis from your compost supplier in order for us to calculate it. And compost can be either measured in tons per acre or cubic yards per acre. So we need to do a, a couple different calculations there um, in order to uh, in order to get our numbers. Um, so what we're looking at is we're looking at available nitrogen, and and nitrogen can certainly vary by the source of your compost. So are you using green waste compost versus dairy? Uh, dairy compost. They will have vastly different amounts of nitrogen in it. Obviously, dairy or manure-based uh, composts are going to have much higher nitrogen levels than, than, say, green waste. So you are going to get a guaranteed analysis um, of nitrogen uh, from your, your supplier. It's going to give you a, a, a nitrogen, a full full analysis, and, you know, um, and what we need to look at on that uh, on that lab sheet is the percent of nitrogen in there. And then we're going to do um, an estimate um, using this uh, using this example here. So in the spreadsheet, and I know this looks very complicated, but remember all we have to do, we need to enter our information in the yellow. So it's gonna it's gonna calculate out um, do all the calculations for us. So a couple things that you need from the lab is the percent nitrogen. Um, and so in, for example, in this, this uh, the, the example that we have, the, the compost contains 1.7% nitrogen. Um, and you'll see a common range is, is one to 2%. That's typically what we see in most composts. And then we need the bulk density um, that will also be listed in the analysis. And so for example, um, this compost weighs 900 pounds per cubic yard. Um, 
and we've got a quick calculator here that tells us, okay, based on these two pieces of information, we're going to have 15.3 pounds of nitrogen per cubic yard or 34 pounds of nitrogen per ton. So if we're going to, if the, the, uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, not, yeah. Um, if the, uh, the, your compost, uh, applicator, or if you applied, um, in this case, we're gonna we're gonna say we applied five tons of compost per acre. Um, one thing that we need to we need to remember is is in within that compost, only about twenty percent of the nitrogen is available um, in year one, and that is uh, that is a uh, uh, kind of an industry standard um, because it's organic. It takes time to break down, and so we have a we usually use our rule of thumb is about 20% um, available year one. Um, and so we enter 20 in that top box and then we enter our total number of tons per acre um, in total applied. It does the percentage and does the math um, and it drops in 34 pounds of nitrogen per acre is what's available to that plant in year one or in that year. Um, and so that pops up into our uh, our box where we will enter that into right there in that pink box there where we'll enter that into 14.3.2. All right. So that's it for compost. Um, now we need to finally do the amount of nitrogen provided in or found in the uh, in our irrigation water. Um, and so again, all these calculators are in our calculator sheet. So let's look at water. Um, first off, it's very important for us to get a water sample um, from your well. Uh, if you have multiple wells, then you are going to take uh, multiple, you know, a water sample from, from each well. Uh, and if those wells you know, depending on your irrigation system, if those wells are feeding into a single storage tank, then you'll want to take uh, you want to take your sample um, ideally from from that storage tank because that those wells have been blended. Um, however, if you have a single well, you can take it from uh, you know from the from the wellhead. Um, but the key is is to understand that the your water report is going to give you nitrogen in parts per million. Um, so you've got your nitrogen in parts per million. We know how much total irrigation water we have applied per acre. Um, that's from section 14.2. We've already done that information. So here's an example of a uh, of a water uh, a water sample. It gives a whole ton of information, but what we really want to to look at here is this number right here, which is the nitrate nitrogen. Now, this lab is very um, handily does the calculations for you, so you can actually see um, it gives you pounds of nitrogen um, per acre foot and per acre inch. However, um, there is a conversion factor that we use in the math to calculate pounds of nitrate nitrogen um, from PPM. And so there's a multiplier of 2.74. Um, we multiply that by the number of the amount of PPM that you have in your water. Uh, and that gives you your pounds of nitrogen per acre feet. Now, again, our calculator does that calculation for you, but it's important to understand that, that there is that underlying conversion factor there. So um, here's our water use report example. Um, we, uh, we had uh, 2.6 parts per million nitrate nitrogen in our water report. That gives us 7.1 pounds of nitrogen per acre foot. In our example that we used, uh, we had 0.89 acre feet of applied water. So we multiply 7.1 pounds times 0.89. That gives us that 16.3 pounds of N per acre. And we are going to enter that into our, uh, our sheet. And then we're going to want to upload um, your water sample report right down here. This is where you... you um, you document your uh, 
your water sample, uh, it gets uploaded right in there. And then I like to upload uh, under here, under the this calculator, I like to uh, upload the, uh, the calculator. And then this is our summary. Um, and so this is 14.2. This is where we go and we we basically it gives us all of our all of our sum, our whole summary uh, of everything at the end and looks like I didn't enter the you know anything here but this is where all your total um, your information is going to um, be documented and uh, and at the end of the day it's actually pretty pretty simple if you just follow the uh, the calculator so now I'm going to share the calculator let's see if I can bring that okay um beth can you confirm that you can see the calculator you're not seeing my uh, powerpoint i see yeah what's in the database is that what you mean uh hold on i'm going it's, to it says general parameters that's the screen i'm seeing right now section 14.4 perfect all right so you're, yeah. you're seeing it okay that's so cool. this this <laughs> is the this is the spreadsheet that um the calculator that you can that you can download um that you're able to download uh, from uh, from the the SIP site, and this is this is where all all the you know the complicated calculations that I showed you. This is where you can you can um, you know if you follow these tab by tab, uh, they will they will be able to to basically answer all of the uh, answer all the questions. So I'm going to go tab by tab. So we're pop into. Um, oh, we're actually seeing the database screen, not the. Oh screen. oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. So seeing where the answers go ultimately. <laughs> oh, all right. Hold on here. I'm going to do a new share and I'm going to share this. Let's see. All right. How there it is. Yep. Yay. Perfect. Okay. All right. So, dude, we're very tech savvy here. Um, all right. So here is the uh, the um, the calculator. So this we're going to follow through under each tab by by section. So the first section in general parameters. Uh, when you're following through, this is where we're going to enter our total number of acres and our total uh, yield um, in tons. And this is that's calculations for fourteen point four. But this is where um, all the calculations start. So. Um, our example vineyard was 124 acres and we got 250 tons. It's probably a second year, third, maybe call it a third year vineyard. Um, hopefully we got more than two tons an acre. But in this, in this, in this example, we got two tons per acre. Now we go to the irrigation tab. And remember, we have a, a whole host of different ways to, to calculate it. Um, now, in this drop down menu here, I'm going to um, choose uh, runtime, converter to acre feet, and then flow in gallons. So that's that's where I'm going to go. So if I know that my irrigation system, for example, ran for, let's say, 120 hours during the season, um, and we have one gallon per hour, so that's pretty standard. Our row spacing is eight foot by five foot. And then the calculator does all the math and calculates that we applied 0.4 acre feet per acre. So very, very simple. So you just need to know what your what your parameters are. Now, if you want to go in liters per hour, um, we can you select the drop down menu and you can say, okay, here's in liters, um, or we can choose gallons per vine. So if we go in gallons per vine and we go down here, we know that uh, it will, yeah, it will, um, let's see, we need to go one gallon per vine. Whoop. No, we need to have our, sorry, we need to have our runtime. So there we go. So it's, it's 300 and let's see, it's calculating this one, which is, through 36. So I prefer to use, I actually prefer, I'm sorry, this is kind of, this is not working out for me. I want to use that. Okay. So ideally, yeah, we do runtime and hours, your emitter flow rate per vine, and then your row spacing. And that's going to give us the most, 
the best calculator there. So that's where we enter that into 14.2.1. And then I like to do a quick little, either a screenshot or I use this, um, if you're on Windows, I use this little fancy snipping tool and I'll snip that and then I'll upload that into uh, into it as well, just to document it. Um, here's our frost water calculator. Um, remember frost sprinklers, if you do have frost sprinklers are typically going to be rated in gallons per minute. So um, for example, this, this system say had a 55 gallon, you know, the total uh, number of sprinklers came out to be, you know, say you had 10 sprinklers per acre um, and they were five and a half gallon per minute sprinklers, which is pretty common for like rainbird impacts. Um, you uh, you uh, had 10 hours of runtime, it will calculate your um, your frost water. In our example though, we had uh, we had zero. So um, because we did not have uh, frost control, so you enter zero in the 14.2.2 section. And then this is going this is where you get your total um, total water use. So it, it's where it calculates uh, everything from your applied irrigation water, your applied frost water. And then this is where it calculates we enter our rainfall total. So let's say we had 20.2 inches of rainfall. It will automatically calculate for you your acre feet per acre. And then here is at the bottom here, this is where um, you enter uh, your total water use in 14.2. All right, let's go to our nitrogen use. So again, this is uh, our nitrogen use report. And remember in our examples, this was solid fertilizers and liquid fertilizers. So in this example here, um, we had, uh, we had 20, say for example, 20 gallons of a 10% nitrogen fertilizer liquid, uh, and that weighed 11 pounds per gallon. So it calculated out to 22 pounds of nitrogen. So this is where you do all your, we get all our calculators. And then I will go to compost here. So here's our compost calculator. And again, this is where we enter the percent uh, nitrogen. So let's just say 10.5% nitrogen. The weight is 900 pounds per cubic yard. And let's say we applied eight tons an acre, or let's say we applied six tons an acre. And remember, we, we want to say we typical um, availability is 20%. So um, we enter that information and it does our calculations for us. And then this is where we get our 36 uh, pounds of N per acre. And then that is all consolidated down in our total nitrogen use. So you can see um, we've got our compost here uh, and it basically, and our water, this pulls from the water. Um, and we're able to enter all that information into the summary, which, let's see. Okay, can you see the, yeah, it goes into the, um, the summary at the end. And those are all the calculators. And that, unless anybody has any questions, that is our presentation. A wrap. Thank you so much, Paul. So helpful. And for anyone who's in the program, we are recording this today. And we also have another recording too that walks you through each of the different sections. So there should be lots of help out there if you couldn't do this, you know, all at once in the last 20 minutes together. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the, the the cool thing is is that I mean the, the the calculations are really simple once you've done them a couple of times. It's just understanding the underlying math um, and really knowing like most of the the challenges that 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 I've seen or or the issues that I've seen is is again it's it's been a decimal point or it's it's been a you know not converting or trying to do math or or you know getting using the wrong math and 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 understanding those conversions so um but i certainly uh 
always uh, help Whitney, who who runs our SIP our SIP program. Um, I am uh, available to uh, to help answer any questions, and I can get on Teams or Zoom or whatever, and and walk you through uh, the calculations and the like. I'm always uh, happy to to be able to help uh, with that because. It, fertilizer can be intimidating yeah. <laughs> and fertilizer, you know, and calculating nitrogen. And especially if you've run, you know, multiple applications over the course of the season, it's, it's really important to, to make sure you add all those up. Yeah, definitely. And we really appreciate you taking the time out to do that. I will note also that within the database, it does have little flags that pop up if a number that you enter is outside of what we've seen as an average. It doesn't always mean that your answer isn't accurate, but you know, if, if it's saying, hey, normally answers are between one and three and your answer is 23, you know, that means maybe there was a miscalculation somewhere. But again, we're, we're happy to help you if you're running into something and just aren't sure, um, you know, why the calculation isn't coming out the way you think it should. <laughs> And thank you so much, Paul. We really appreciate you sharing your time and your expertise with us. Always a pleasure. All right. Have a good one. All right. Thank you. Thank you.